Attention. Go. The Vian Park in the star. Just to remind you, it's Laser Schumacher from the Netherlands on the right of your picture, and it's the German from Rudolf Saarbrücken on the left of your picture, and Bikin. And we're in for a great race. He was speaking to the manager of the German team last night. They've got a big contingent over here. All of these crews vying for selection for the upcoming World Championships, which are in August this year. So this is a great event for those athletes to come to because there are no more World Cups. There's not really any chances to have any quality international racing aside from this Henley Regatta. So they've built it into their preparation. They had their national championships and final selections last week uh, back in Hamburg in Germany. So here they are getting some racing under their belt at the Henley Regatta. Shane Hart from the Netherlands. She's a very laid back rower, uh, very cool, very relaxed. She got in a double skull, tried to get to the Olympics with uh, Marlois Oldenburg and uh, they had a great season, but just came up short in the qualification regatta. So I guess that Shaynard would probably be the favorite for this contest, Sarah. Yeah, you and I were in Poznan only a couple of weeks ago at the third rowing World Cup, and we were commenting that Shaynard, she's really unlucky to not be going to Rio. As you said, she missed out on qualifying the double, but she was in the A final at the World Cup, and we've seen her sculling really come on in the last couple of years, and she seems to get better with each outing and each regatta. Yeah, and we saw Stefan Breunink, the Dutch sculler, go out in the diamonds yesterday against Hannes Abreno. And I think Breunink was uh, struggling because he's so powerful, but the water was so swelly. But now the water's quite flat, and uh, Lisa Schoenard, probably a more experienced sculler than Breunink, is actually going really well in these conditions. Binkin, on the left of your picture, the German from Saarbrücken. She's used to being down. She had to come through the Lithuanian, but uh, the Lithuanian yesterday in the semi-final didn't have a gap as big as Lisa Schoenard has created. Yeah, look, I think Lisa will try and get herself a bit of a more of a comfortable lead here, and then we'll see her start to bring that rate down. She's been coming down the track around 28, 30. She's a little bit higher than that now, uh, so she's keeping the beat up a bit longer than I've seen her have to do in some of the previous rounds. But she's a nice long sculler. She's about 180 centimetres tall. And I really like her patience and the way she grabs onto that water and just accelerates. She keeps her arms nice and long and loose. And uh, I think she's getting better and better, like I said, with each time we see her race internationally. So I'm going to ask you, how would either of these two women compare either technically or physiologically to the Australian Kim Brennan, who, of course, you've rode with, the favourite for gold, perhaps, in the Rio Olympics? Look, Kim is... Uh, I mean, there's, there's a number of reasons why she is the world champion and uh, the favourite heading into Rio, and one of them is just her physical size. She's just the same height as me, so just over six foot two. Uh, she's about 74 kilos, I think, so not particularly heavy given her height, but she's just an absolute weapon. <laughs> she's a, she, her ability to train and do work is unlike anyone that I've ever met and uh, clocks up a huge number of kilometres on the water and seems to manage to escape injury and illness. So. Her physical size coupled with her engine and her ability to do work. Plus, technically, she is a standout. We were saying in Poznan, watching Kimi Rowe, her technique is she's a masterclass in how to scull. So uh, she became Olympic favourite, Kim Brennan, by beating her rival, the 2014 World Singles Champion, Emma Twig from New Zealand, on the Malta Lake. Here on Henley's waters, the Thames, you are seeing Lisa Schienacht been on the fringes of the Dutch team a late bloomer thanks to Mike Youngman for the biog of Lisa really appreciate that and you'll be enjoying the uh, Dutch rowing journalist so active on Twitter your countrywoman putting in such a fantastic performance Binkin has been uh, able to soak up the pressure and really put something back in the middle of the race here she's finding it more tough the Saarbrücken Scala lives and uh, trains in Berlin these days. She is on the right of your picture. You can see the drone shot indicating she's got an awful lot of work to do. Is it possible at all that Binkin can come back from this position, Sarah? Look, I don't think so. That is a huge gap to have to make up. There's probably four boat lengths there that she'd have to be able to reverse. And I think that she and I looks really comfortable. She looks nice and long and loose to me. She's not rating particularly high. And I would think that 
she'd just be looking for anything that's going to come from the German Sculler and I think she would have the reserves to be able to counter any attacks that are made. But Lisa Sheenard, last year, she was sitting in the opposite position to what she is now behind the Olympic champion Merka Napakova. So she would be no doubt enjoying a change of fortunes here today. Sheenard rose for the Eindhoven Student Rowing Club called Theta, I believe after the Greek letter and uh, it's a technical university it doesn't have a lot of uh, female rowers Sarah so Lisa's pretty much the first notable female rower to come out of that club Dirk Lippitz uh, Dutch row in the men's quad I think came from uh, that university Gerard Engelmeers the Dutch rower also raced in the Sydney Olympics is Lisa's coach but he's not travelled with Lisa here so he will have done an awful lot of work with her in the single last year and the double this year. She's extending the distance ahead of the German beacon. And I think the German has really thrown in the tail now, effectively. Yeah, look, it was always going to be a tough ask for the German Scala coming up against Lisa Schienard of the Netherlands. She will be a spare for the Dutch national aid come the Rio Olympic Games. So I wonder how much nerves might have played the part. We'll uh, talk to Anne Binkin after this, but uh, she didn't have such a good German trials because of nerves, but she's been fantastic here in the head-to-head -head racing, certainly in yesterday's semi-final where she uh, beat Adam Vikaite, the powerful Lithuanian. And uh, she hasn't managed to get her sculling act together, perhaps a little tight, a little tense, maybe not so long and fluid forward. Lisa Schoenart, well, you know, she's had the pressure of that regatta of death, the Olympic qualification regatta, which she didn't manage to get through to Rio in, but um, really long and solid now. Yeah, she is really a lot longer there through the front end. She's, I think, getting more compressed, a bit more length through the front, and she's doing a really good job of getting locked on and then just shifting that boat forward, really levering the boat each stroke and, and making the most of her length. And like I said, really patient. There's no sort of ripping or tearing at it. Whereas the German Scala rating a little higher and perhaps not getting as much length as she could through the front end to get that acceleration through the stroke. So the view of the enclosures from our camera just in the last part of the course. If you're watching on BT Sports, this is the first time with Ryan 3. Welcome to you. This is what it looks like at Henley. The home of rowing in 1839 when the regatta first started here and uh, well you could have been one of the hundreds of thousands of uh, spectators millions since the regatta started that have lined the banks to come to watch the world's best rowers or as men and women compete over this course now naturally because of technology you can watch it BT Sport in the UK and around the world on YouTube and isn't it fantastic you're seeing top quality scully Broadcast has really taken this regatta to the world and I think also completely changed the sport of rowing and how we view it and how we broadcast it. Look at these fantastic pictures. We know that we've got people with us listening in Australia and New Zealand and over in the US. A lot of US crews competing here and of course I'm sure spectators in the Netherlands and Germany watching this race unfold but it is the Dutch woman Lisa Schienard as she comes down past the enclosures towards the finish line in the lead. So Lisa Schienard from the Netherlands takes the title from Anne Winken from Saarbrücken in Germany. Congratulations and you can see what it means to her.